prison, we don't have freedom. So the smallest things for us can mean a lot. It could be something really, really trivial to somebody else, but to you, it's such a big thing and you feel so passionate about it. When you feel as though you have a voice in prison, it, it means a lot to you. So somebody who isn't in prison uh, has a complaint, can, can go out and do something else and forget about it, but it's very difficult sometimes for a prisoner to put things behind them and move on. Investigators in the Ombudsman's office are very dedicated to the work that we undertake. Getting to the truth is very important for us as an organisation. And often the complaint to us is the prisoner's last way of expressing their voice. The Ombudsman's office has two principal functions. The first is to independently investigate all complaints made by those in prison custody, immigration detention, or under probation service supervision. And the second principal function is the sad but essential role of independently investigating deaths in custody, prison custody, immigration detention, and deaths in approved premises. Whenever a prisoner uh, complains at an establishment and remains dissatisfied, it comes to, to us to look at and to consider. Uh, and we put a fresh pair of eyes on it uh, just to um, see whether the decision that the prison's made is, is fair and reasonable and the right one. What we hope to do is to provide a service to complainants so that they feel that their complaints are considered by an outside body that it's not simply a service judging itself. More or less immediately when somebody dies, our office will be notified. We're looking for evidence, we're looking for information. Ultimately, we're looking at the, the level of care which this particular individual received. The majority of Ombudsman staff are investigators. They look into the circumstances that have given rise either to the complaint or the circumstances surrounding a death in custody. And that's the heart of their professionalism, to make sure that investigations are thorough but proportionate. After all, we are talking about public money, but nevertheless, to make sure that no stone is left unturned. We investigate all deaths in prison custody, approved premises and immigration detention centres. Anybody who dies within that particular establishment, whether it be by natural causes, whether it's a self-inflicted death, um, we would actually investigate. We also contact families um, because central to our investigation are the families' concerns and we like to be able to un understand what they are before we go to do the investigation. And make sure that the prison did everything that is expected of them to look after your son. We deal with the emotions and the grief and the distress that they're suffering at that time as somebody that can provide a consistent point of contact for the family and obviously answer the questions that they ask us. You can put your thoughts in writing if that would be easier. Once we've established a chain of events, we look at anything that might be of concern to us. We have to keep an open mind as to whether there was something that could have been done that might have made the outcome different. That's looking at the systems that are in place to protect that prisoner. For example, suicide prevention monitoring. I've noticed in your inspection report that there was something about the healthcare centre and I really need to meet with the head of healthcare. Obviously, recommendations are made uh, from the reports and uh, these are passed on to the family so that uh, they can see that we are making and taking positive steps to prevent this happening to people in the future. If there's been a, a lack of care or things that could have been done and that should have been done. Brought by the end of today. When the complaint arrives at the office, I, as an investigator, assess the paperwork, may pay a visit to the prison to interview the prisoner, perhaps phone him up on the telephone. Tutoring the education department supports your yes. applications. I speak to staff, gather whatever documentary evidence and information the prisoner's got, look at policy and procedures that are in the office that govern prison life, and then arrive at a decision on whether there is merit and value in the complaint that has been investigated. Obviously, in the interest of fairness, both the prisoner's side and the staff sides have to be considered. Some cases are very straightforward and can be concluded with a phone call on the same day. Other cases are much more complicated, and the investigations for those can go on for several weeks. I'd just like to ask you about the procedures you follow there. Our aim is to sort out the problem. It's not necessary to produce a long, detailed report. Of course, there are complaints where that is what is required most serious complaints, allegations of assault or racism, 
then we will put in additional resources to ensure that the problem is identified and a remedy is found. What I find is often the initial letter that we receive from the prisoner is only really the tip of the iceberg. And of course, often when prisons make a complaint, it's an indication of a wider problem. And when we think that the problem may be more widespread, we can make recommendations to the service and get the fundamental rules changed. And I think that they value that input. They, they value that extra level of supervision, if you like. So the leaders of the services are generally prepared to accept the Ombudsman's recommendations. It is particularly important to ensure that the independent ombudsman enjoys a robust but professional relationship with each of the services that we oversee, so that we can be confident that lessons will be learned. It builds a level of trust to show that we're not afraid of being uh, examined by external bodies, and if it resolves the complaint to a satisfactory conclusion, then you know every, everybody's happy. Sometimes, not always, but sometimes you can actually make the system better. Putting something right is, is very rewarding. Thanks very much. And that's one of the reasons why I enjoy doing the job. I hope our investigations make a real difference to the care of prisoners. Um, and I think that's what drives me and I think drives most of the office. It's also very satisfying when you can give something back to a prisoner who may feel that he's been forgotten and written off and his rights are being ignored. I think you need the Ombudsman to be fair, um, reliable, and you need them to listen. And, you know, they've done all them things with me. Sometimes it can be dealt with by landing staff, POSO, but if it does have to go to the Ombudsman, they do look into it, and if your case is valid, then something is done. This gives you self-esteem in, in, in a funny kind of way. It gives you confidence as well to be able to communicate and know that you can go through those channels and be heard and your voice can make a change.